Nyanga, 26 kilometers from Cape Town, is one of the city's oldest black townships. Thousands of black people live in minute shacks with very basic services. Less access to housing, health services, and quality jobs. I came to Nyang about 11 years ago, and it's an extraordinarily violent place with a huge number of problems. According to the 2017-2018 statistics, it is the murder capital of South Africa, with 308 murders reported in that calendar year. That's almost one every day. Uh, hijackings, robberies, aggravated robberies, rapes. If Nyanga hasn't got the highest, it's in the top 10. The root cause of this crime in our community is poverty. These are the ladies who all lost their children through crime. What pains me about this whole situation is that it has been like this for decades. Young people growing up with no sense of escaping this cycle of poverty and violence and death. For some of the challenges that the youth faces here in Nyanga is that um, there's teenage pregnancy, there's a high crime rate in the townships. We are just at the bottom of the triangle, right? So no one pays attention to us. The police don't necessarily come on time. They don't necessarily patrol. I had an incident where four guys came into my house and they held us all at gunpoint. And they took my phone, they took like my auntie's bag, they took my sister's phone. They tried to take the car, but the neighbors were already coming out to help stop this crime from happening. The schools here face a lot of challenges. In my school, we had a problem where we did not have a physical science teacher. I was in grade 11 and we still didn't have the teacher. And then we kept on writing letters to the school complaining about this matter because we, we were panicking that at the end of the day, it's us who are going to suffer. So we, we ended up having to mobilize a strike as the children. Only then did we get the attention and only then did the school provide the, the teacher for us. And even the teacher that they got was a teacher that we ourselves looked for, a teacher that we found. It wasn't because there were no teachers, it was simply because no one cared. This school is a school that deals with learners with barriers to learning. Their ranging of age is from 14 to 16 year old. Our learners are also facing challenges that is difficult to address, uh, drug usage, gang violence, also there is a lack of parental involvement. There is no support system regarding security because we have to check for ourselves how are we going to secure the learners when they are inside because this environment needs to be a safe environment. One incident that happened was a learner was involved in the gangsterism. To us, he was representing a very good behavior when you look at him. But one day the teacher was asking some question and the learner didn't want to respond to this question. And the learner took a school driver from one of the workshops in the welding. And he, he ran after the teacher with the school driver. He nearly killed the teacher, but he only managed to stab the teacher. But fortunately, he was rushed quickly to hospital and the life was saved. So those are the challenges that you are facing, but you are teaching them the morals and the values of the schools and the principles, regardless of the situation that at times they are finding out. We have to restore the behavior of the learner because we strongly believe in the restoration of behavior instead of worsening the situation. In Nyanga, it's tiny, but it also has a, a very high population density. I mean, we're talking something like 18,000 people per square kilometer. And I mean, the whole of Cape Town has 1,800, give or take. And when you put human beings squashed in a small space like that, um, it's bound to get violent, it's bound to get problematic. What does that do to people? Um, this is not how people are meant to live in one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. A country like that should never have to deal with this level of poverty. 
if you look at the drug use, you know, it's increasing every single year. There are people who would offer you drugs and a lot of people, young people like myself, would exhort to those substances because they think, yeah, maybe this is the way I should do things. There was a person who offered me drugs last week. So if it was someone else, they would take those drugs and thought that maybe it was an easy way for them to ease off the stress. But it is not the way we're supposed to do things. What people tend to do when they see people like, the, like this who sell drugs to children and who, who, who destroy communities like this, they would protect them and think, no, they just trying to make something for themselves because there's no work in South Africa. So selling drugs or getting into illegal stuff is an easier way for black people to make money. It's quite difficult to deal with gangsterism because gangsterism has been here for many, many years. If your child does not go to school, is not employed, is, um, hasn't got anything to do, then what else do they do? They'll obviously join the, the gangsters, you know, start by smoking dacha, by uh, smoking teh, and then become gangsters. We don't know how to stop it. People have become so familiar with the poverty that we, um, we live in and we see in, in Nyanga that the idea then becomes how to contain it. If you look around Nyanga, there's a wall, there's a palisade wall around the township. You know, it's almost as if the government or, or, or those who are responsible for looking after Nyanga have decided that we're going to enclose this space like a zoo and whatever happens in there, let it stay there. The rest of us can continue. The challenge is to come into these kind of spaces and actually look at what is going on and make people's lives better. The only thing that keeps you hopeful in a situation as dire as this is one's faith. The only thing that keeps you seeing human beings in this place is faith. Faith helps to recognize the humanity of these people. The mothers, the, the parents who bury their children because of all the violence that goes on. It's faith that sustains them. <laughs>